Are you tired of getting to the end of each year and feeling like you wasted your time, you didn't accomplish your goals, you feel honestly burnt out and confused? Because I felt that way for many, many years of my life. I felt like, you know, I was achieving my goals in some way, but I wasn't fully reaching my potential in all the areas that I really wanted to, and I really didn't know if that was possible. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you mindsets that I applied to different areas of my life over the course of this year, goals that I set for myself, things that I did that were achievable and not out of reach that really helped me feel satisfied this year and fulfilled and like more in touch with my inner child and, and my dreams and who I am as a person. At this exact time, one year ago, I was working at Target. It was a great job and it was where God had me at the time, but I'm going to insert pictures here. Every day was something different at Target and I felt like that's where God was leading me and maybe he was going to promote me or he was going to have me there long term. And I felt like that's where God had me. At the beginning of December last year, I even got an award for top brand award and I was so proud of myself because I had been working my butt off at work, but I was burnt out and I was really tired from that job. It caused me to be exhausted working these crazy hours that were unpredictable and I didn't have a set schedule and that really affected my mental health for the worse. <laughs> and I think the Christmas season in retail just does something to you because people really are so ungrateful and disrespectful of your time, your energy, your effort to make the store look good and they just really don't understand all the work that goes in behind the scenes and so definitely if you have a service worker in your life please be kind to them, go out of your way, go the extra mile. But anyways, that's not what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I want to make this to inspire you because a few years ago, I didn't know that it was possible to do so many things in one year. So I'm going to share them with you. After getting fired from my job as a worship resident at the church that I was working at, like I shared a few videos back, I went to Target because I was comfortable with that because I had done that before in college but working it full time is just a completely different ball game. And I remember when I was working that job I said to one of my coworkers, you know I really wish I could start my own YouTube channel but I don't know how to edit videos, I don't know what I would even talk about, I'm not good at it, I'm not trained. And I remember he said to me, you know what, you should try it, like practice makes perfect, it's not as hard as you think, you just need to practice it. And I'm so grateful that he said that because it's been in the back of my mind for the last two years and he was so, so right. So at the beginning of the year, Target set out a bunch of magazines in the break room for all of the employees to make vision boards. Honestly, I think only a few of us did it, but me and my friend Dierica both did it together and it was so much fun. I really didn't think anything of it. I didn't even know if I would accomplish the things on the board, but I just wanted to write all of my dreams down. Instead of writing these specific goals and to do's and numbers and things down that just doesn't resonate with me as a person I'm very much more so of an arbitrary person and I just wanted to get all that down on a piece of paper so that's what I did I will just share some of the things that I wrote down and I'll kind of like explain each category how they came about how it changed my life all of that so this is my board it says 2022 goals and right there I put Jesus and then it says deepening my relationship with Jesus being a better reflection of Christ and sharing his love with others. And, you know, those seem like arbitrary things, but to me it was really important to be in the Word a lot more this year. I really have not been over the last few years. I would go months and months without reading my Bible and still claim that, like, I felt close to the Lord. I was like, no, I'm not doing that again this year. So the best thing I did for myself, I've always been skeptical of the Bible app. I always thought it was so dumb but I downloaded the Bible app this year because I'm a slow reader and it's really hard for me sometimes to sit down, read a passage, dissect it, take notes on it. Although I think all those things are important and good sometimes for my lifestyle. I just don't have the brain focus. I don't have the time. So I downloaded the app. And so right here you can click on plans. Oops. And... I go on completed plans. It says I've completed 18 this year, which is literally mind-blowing to me. I've never done that many Bible studies in my life. And it's a really great way to quickly break down a biblical topic, Bible passages, have it written about from someone's perspective who's probably a little bit wiser than you. And then it has Bible verses that accompany it so that you can kind of apply that to what is being taught. And then I listen to worship music right after that. And it really helps me just like 
soak it in I listen to it usually on the way to work because I'm in a rush but honestly that's better than like not reading your Bible and I feel like the enemy tempts us so many times to be like well I didn't have the perfect quiet time this morning so I'm not even worthy so I'm not even gonna read my Bible and that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard and he wants us to believe that lie so that we're not reading the Bible and we have to ask God for strength to overcome that because that's not what he wants for us he wants us to have the word in our hearts no matter what the situation is so I highly highly recommend downloading the Bible app you can press the audio button and it will read it to you which has been the biggest lifesaver for me so the next thing I want to say really fast in the same category is I've had a lot of tears this year I've had a lot of like begging the Lord and saying please God like show me if this is your will or not and that's applied to multiple things that I've done this year whether it be friendships family apartments jobs whatever it is that is the most important thing and I definitely like haven't done that in the past so I would definitely encourage you whatever you're struggling with whatever you're going through like it says in Philippians 4 verse 6 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and it's not saying that God's gonna he's not a genie in a bottle he's not automatically gonna grant those requests but if we come to him in prayer and we petition him and we come to him with thanksgiving he does hear those requests and he values them okay I have got to go faster on this okay this part up here says practicing cleaner diet and that doesn't mean that I'm on a diet that just means what I'm consuming is cleaner food than overly processed sugar and stuff like that continue eating more fruit and drinking smoothies now I haven't drunk the most smoothies this year but I feel like Austin and I have made a conscious effort to eat a lot healthier this year to plan out our meals every week on Sunday we will plan out our meals go to the grocery store together and a lot of times we'll make dinner together and it's so fun and we have meal prep so we can bring that for lunches the next day to work so that's great down here one of the most important things is right here find healing through giving myself more grace going to counseling and and through friendships and I think sometimes we can have a tendency to bury things under the surface and to not confront hard issues and I really feel so strongly that it's the Lord's will that we go to counseling to receive help and to process our emotions and the things that we've been through over the course of our life because that stuff builds up jobs relationships friendships whatever I would always put off counseling I was always scared to go but I would highly highly recommend that you go to counseling it literally I've like been so emotional today I've already cried like eight times it literally changed my life. I will never forget the second week sitting in counseling with my eyes closed and her having me process a certain situation from my past and she was taking me like through these rooms in my mind and these hallways and having me feel these different emotions and like I just had tears pouring down my face and it was honestly one of the most healing experiences that I've ever had and if you have, if you have anything that you've been through or if you haven't been through anything and you just need to talk to someone please 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 go to counseling it will change your life I promise you and I feel like so many of us walk around hurting other people because we haven't received the healing that we personally need I know that's like a quote that trends on Facebook sometime like the people that are in counseling are in counseling for the people in their lives that need to go to counseling but like that's honestly true I started going to counseling in May I went until October it is expensive and I'm waiting to go back until I can pay for it with my debit card and not my credit card but I love my counselor and she changed my life and I will never be able to thank her enough for that the other thing is giving myself more grace and this is also related to counseling when you're able to see your past actions through almost like an inner child lens and I don't even know how to really explain that but if you go back in time to the decisions that you made in elementary school middle school high school whatever it is you kind of just want to give that person a hug and you just want to say gosh I wish I could help you see into the future I wish I could tell you that everything's gonna be okay I wish I could tell you that you don't have to stay up at night losing sleep and crying and being depressed about whatever it is um, whether it's a death in the family or you know a friendship being lost in high school or you know a relationship ending because ultimately I do believe I don't believe in karma but I do believe 
that everything happens for a reason in God's timing and God's providence and yes we have free will but I also do believe that he ties everything together for our good that's a biblical concept and yeah so anyway viewing it through that lens you can kind of just give yourself more grace even in the decisions that you make on a day-to-day -day basis it's like oops like you know that wasn't my intention I'm sorry that they took it that way or I'm sorry that I did that or I'm you know whatever but you can just say okay you know what I did the best I could at the time with the information that I was given and that's all I can do and that's okay <sighs> Sorry to get so heavy. The next one is writing letters to loved ones and journaling more. I have not journaled more this year, but I feel like I've been more present and more grounded. And I have written a few letters, so that's good. I did check that off. But ultimately, I think the goal here is just to be more intentional about remembering your life years down the road when you look back and you might think oh that was such a hard season or oh that was the best season ever. When you go back and read those journals, which I have from a few years ago, you're like dang like it wasn't actually all that it was cracked up to be. I was actually going through a hard time or vice versa. Like, oh, that was actually a beautiful time. And like, I really took it for granted. Next thing is read my Bible three to four times per week. Now, I've not been perfect on this every single week, but genuinely I read my Bible more this year than I have ever read it in previous years. And I can say that without a shadow of a doubt, even though that's kind of embarrassing. But I just want to encourage you, like, yes, an hour long Bible study is great, but if you don't have the time and the focus right now, start today and just get the app listen to it be in the word that's all i'm gonna say next thing is read one chapter of a book per day now i think i have a little bit of undiagnosed adhd so it's kind of hard for me to start things and stay focused on them so <clears throat> i've only read about eight books this year but what i will say about that that's been so fun is i have not read a novel since high school and I think that Christian nonfiction really took the joy for me out of reading. I know that sounds crazy and that might sound like blasphemy to some of you, but although I was learning and growing through that, I think for me personally, I need to read scripture in order to grow closer to the Lord. And those books are beautiful and have so much insight, but they can also be very taxing on your mind and just make you think really hard whereas a fiction book is just kind of fun and you skim through it and if you're reading a mystery it's like ooh, like what's gonna happen next and it's just like good for your brain I think to read certain books and so yeah I've read about eight or nine books this year and like I said I haven't done that probably in six or seven or eight years maybe and I used to love reading so much like all the way elementary through high school I loved reading I would read Nancy Drew I would read like these fictional like princess story books I, I, I would read young adult fiction I read the Hunger Games obviously I read so many different things and I loved it and then I totally lost my love for reading and I am a slow reader so it's kind of hard for me to get into books but I would highly highly encourage you to say like hmm what am I most interested in like when I listen to podcasts or when I watch movies like what kind of genre interests me the most and then from there say like okay what would be some authors that I would maybe be interested in? You can look them up on Goodreads or on Google reviews and just find some. One of my favorites is Sherry Lapina. I feel like she writes great mystery books. For the most part, they're pretty clean and they just really focus on the plot line and what's going on about the mystery versus like language, drugs, violence, other really awful things that I've read in other books that I will not recommend on here. You have to get past the first like 80 to 100 pages and then I promise you like it will be so so worth it. So yeah, read a book this year. I promise you won't regret it. Okay, the next thing is taking more intentional time for myself right here. Ooh. Skincare, walks, buying flowers, thrifting, and travel. And because of the way I grew up, I feel like I limited my mindset in the past of saying, oh, I can't travel here, or I can't buy that, or I can't go thrifting or whatever, I don't have the money. And yes, you need to be wise with your money, but you also will never get this time in your life back ever again. And I don't want to look back on this time and be like, dang, I wish I would have had that experience, I wish I would have followed that passion, because, yeah, like I said, you can't ever get that back. So, although I haven't started skincare until this very part of the year <laughs> in December when Good Molecules sent me a awesome PR package. Thank you so much to them. I feel like my skin has literally changed. I don't know why the heck I didn't start doing skincare like literally three years ago, but I'm excited about that in the upcoming year. I can't wait to keep using their products. I also went on a lot of walks this year. I haven't been on a walk in a hot minute, but I went on a lot this year and it really like rejuvenated me. It was a time to pray. It was a time to get fresh air and 
yeah, you don't have to go for long. Just go for like 10 or 15 minutes and it honestly will just put you in a better mood for the whole day. The other thing is thrifting. As you guys know, through many videos <laughs> and many statements that I've made, I absolutely love thrifting. And if that's something that you enjoy, set a budget for yourself and say, okay, for this month, I'm going to spend 20 to $80 on thrifting and even try to like flip certain things and you can make more money that way. Get your money back and then keep earning money off of that and at the same time simultaneously do a passion that you really really enjoy and it's just so cool to me i love lessening the impact that we have on the earth by you know reusing things instead of just throwing them in a landfill and finding new uses for things i think that that's so exciting okay the other one is travel i'm gonna try to say this really fast but this year i think i flew three times i went to pittsburgh twice this year once at the beginning of the year once in august and then we went to houston texas in november for my friend's wedding and then we went to another friend's wedding in new Bern back in april and we've gone to the beach several times during the summer i went with my friends i went with austin we went to his parents lake house we like on a whim decided to go to florida for our anniversary even though we like didn't have that much money but what i will say about that is like you're never gonna get those weddings back again you're never gonna get that first anniversary back obviously this doesn't apply to everyone right like i want to be sensitive but i really think sometimes you just have to like take a leap for it even if it feels scary gas isn't that expensive anymore it's like 270 here in charlotte and it's just like so refreshing to take a day trip to go somewhere to do something to get away and i highly recommend it like you need that you gotta break up the mundane with the things that make your soul come alive like going to the beach like going to the lake like those things are so crucial and those are the moments that you're gonna look back on in life and think dang like i lived my life to the fullest i had so much fun so all that to say travel regardless of your stipulations just go for it the top part says pursue my creative goals paint more often work on my youtube channel and grow my graphic design skills now have i painted more absolutely not i think i painted once or twice this year so we're just gonna let that one slide the next one is work on my youtube channel this is what i will say if you want to start a youtube channel make a list of supplies that you need make a list of things that you need to do to get started whether it's you know coming up with your channel name coming up with graphics for it like a banner to go on your youtube channel a uh, business email things like that and i can kind of post my checklist here that i used and some video ideas as well but you have to kind of like plan a little bit in advance but obviously you can't control the outcome of that but i remember in january and i just like want this to inspire you because like if you want to start a youtube channel do it like just do it it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have if that brings you joy and fulfillment then you need to do it at the end of january this year i had just gotten a camera for christmas and I remember thinking, again, I don't know how to edit videos. Hello, like, what the heck am I going to do? Well, I had used Adobe, like, the Adobe Suite before, but I had never used Premiere, and I did not understand how to edit videos for some reason. It just wouldn't, like, click in my mind. So I Googled just about everything under the sun. How to make cuts, how to edit audio, how to insert photos, how to insert text, how to export the video correctly, how to upload it to YouTube, how blah, 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 like you name it i did it and i was googling the silliest stuff but honestly i wish i could go back in time and again this just applies to what i talked about earlier but like i wish i could give that person a hug and be like good job like you're doing so awesome and i remember like i posted my first video at the beginning of february i had no subscribers and now i have like close to 500 and that's not a lot you know for a whole year because i did take like six months off but that is growth like a year ago i didn't even have a youtube channel it's just incredible like what can happen in a year when you put your mind to something and i believe that like 2023 is going to be even greater i have even more goals for this year and things that i want to accomplish and i would love to be able to do this full time so and at the same time if you are a christian i also believe that like and Austin has to remind me of this all the time, but there is so much power in putting the Lord first in your daily life, but also in your videos too, because if you don't do that and you just make it about yourself and you don't like in some small way, even through like your kindness, point back towards the Lord, like what is it for? Like we are literally here to share God's love with other people and that is literally the whole point of this those are the main things the last thing i want to say is about the jobs that i've done this year started working at target then i started working in childcare in january as an assistant teacher 
and I didn't even like kids before that, okay? It has taught me to understand their routine, to understand their development, and to really love them and bond with them and care for them. And I think that's so beautiful, and it's taught me to understand, like, the sacrifices of motherhood and just, like, how beautiful that is that, like, God made women for that purpose. That's not their only purpose, okay? They have many other purposes, okay? Your, pur your only purpose is not motherhood, okay? But it is a gift and it is a blessing, and I think that that's so cool. So anyways, at the beginning of the year, I was still also working as a, I was still working as a social media intern for one of my friend's parents' companies, and then I quit that in May. I didn't feel fulfilled, and I felt like it wasn't leading me in a direction towards my passions, and I think that that's really important to realize. And then in May, I started working as a video editor for someone, and it was great. It taught me a lot of hands-on skills that I definitely needed to have my own YouTube channel, but ultimately it took all my time away on the weekends. I was very, very drained. Ultimately, I didn't feel like that that was leading me in a direction to where it was aligning with my goals and passions as well, so I quit that. And I started nannying part-time in September for this amazing family, and I love them so much, but doing that and still working part-time in childcare at this other company has allowed me to have more freedom and flexibility in my schedule to pursue my youtube channel and it's just like such a huge blessing in life and i also was able to work with someone who is a photographer here in charlotte and be her day of assistant and honestly it was so much fun and i love weddings and it made me realize how much i admire people in that industry and the hard work and sacrifice that goes into it yeah it's just been fun and i feel like another part of my creative side has come alive so all that to say like I have tried out the full spectrum of things this year and if I had never been fired from my job, I never ever would have had these amazing experiences, been able to go to these weddings, travel, do all these things, learn these skills, meet new people. Like You never know what God's plan is in life. You never know where he's leading you and what he has destined for you. And I truly believe that he has big and amazing things in store for you in 2023. And it doesn't have to be these specific goals, but just like write down your passions, write down the things that you love and then work towards those things simultaneously. And I promise you, you will feel fulfilled. And in the course of a year, you will probably get to most of those things. And then you can actually look back on your list or your board and be like, no way like I actually did that I grew so much this year I did this this and this like I took care of myself I read I read my bible I, I met new people or whatever it is I went to counseling for the first time I changed my life like all these things are amazing and so I just want to encourage you to take the next step and change your life it is honestly incredible to me what can happen in a year when you actually set your mind to something which is what I did and the last thing I wanted to say is like really genuinely in years past, I've gotten to the end of the year and been like, what did I even do this year? Like, I didn't complete any of my goals. I didn't work out. I didn't get in shape. Like, I didn't even eat healthy. I didn't get on a good sleep schedule. I didn't take care of my body. I didn't do like, you know, all these things. And I just felt like, okay, or the year's just going to keep going by and I'm not going to accomplish my dreams and all this stuff. But like, it is achievable. I believe in you. He believes in you and I want the best for you in 2023 and I'm believing that for you and I'm praying that for you and for myself and for my friends and I love you guys so much. I hope that this was helpful. Comment below what your goals and your vision is for 2023 and I would love to even see pictures if you want to DM them to me of what you're planning to uh, work toward and strive towards this year. So anyways, I love you guys. I hope that this video has been helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye!